Today let's use the Arduino to create a blinking LED and let's do it with a little bit more uh, detail. Let's do it with just plain wiring, the uh, Arduino with plain wiring and an LED and a resistor and then the uh, Arduino with a breadboard and then let's take it to the test bench and do it in the real world. So let's get started. Let's get the Arduino out here and let's do it the most simple way. Let's just do bare wiring here. Let's get the LED out and let's get a resistor out. And this is about the most common scenario you can have. And by default, the uh, Tinkercad program gives us a 1K resistor, 1000 ohms. And it gives us a red LED, but if we click on it, we can change the color if we want to. But let's stick with red for now. And let's just connect this up. One of the things that the Arduino does is it includes a basic program uh, to help people get started. If we look at the code, we can go up here and click on code. We can see that they include a basic program for us to get started with. And what this does, it says set the built-in LED to high. That means apply 5 volts to it. And the built-in LED is this one right here. And then, so it says set that one to high, which means turn it on, apply 5 volts to it. All mean the same thing. And then wait a second, so leave it on for a second. And then set it to low, or 0 volts, or turn it off. And then do that for a second and then start all over again and this is called a loop and this will loop forever until we tell it to do something else. Let's start the simulation and we can see that the internal LED is blinking. So we didn't have to do anything to get started here. So that's just kind of a neat way to, to uh, see something happen before having to worry about being able to do anything. Okay, let's stop that simulation and let's connect our own external LED too and see how that works out. So you have to limit the current to LEDs or they will burn themselves out. The way that you do that is including a resistor and a real common value for the resistor is 1K. Let me get rid of this window for a minute. Standard value for a resistor is 1K, so they include that when we just pull a resistor out. They give us a 1K value, but we can change that value to anything we want. And then we get the red LED. So let's connect that. Let's just connect it on that same pin 13 and let's see how that works out. So I'm just going to run the wiring here from pin 13 to the resistor. And the resistor does not have polarity, so it doesn't matter uh, whether you hook pin 13 to this end of the resistor or this end of the resistor. But the LED does have polarity, so you have to connect that the right way. This side of it is called the anode, that's the positive side. And this line is called the cathode, and that's the negative side. So the cathode has to go to ground. So let's just connect that as long as I'm here to ground. And then the uh, resistor, we've got to connect that other lead up to the an anode of the um, LED. And I was putzing around here, so I have the wire colors turned to black. By default, they're typically green. And uh, Tinkercad's got some new choices up here that are fairly new, as of this recording anyway. If you choose this drop-down, you get different kinds of wiring you can use here. And if you choose this one, you can change the color of the wires. So let's change the power side of this little circuit to red. Red is common for uh, the positive side in circuitry. So I'm going to highlight that wire and then I can go up here to the drop down and I can choose red. And then I can, hire this I can uh, highlight this wire and I can just tap the number two on my keyboard. These colors actually correspond to resistor color codes. So red is two on a resistor color code, orange is three, yellow is four, etc. And then we'll leave the negative side at black, which is the common color for the negative side of a circuit. So we've hooked it up to the same pin that the internal LED is connected to. So if we open up the code again, we can see that they say that they're going to set the built-in LED to high. That's the built-in LED, and if you read the documentation, you'll learn that that's the same as pin 13. And I'll put a link to the page on the Arduino website where you can read the details about this Blink program. That link will be down below in the comments section. So let's start this and see what happens now. We'll start the simulation and we see now that the external LED is blinking at the same rate that the internal or what they call the built-in LED is blinking at. So that makes a real easy circuit for us. We don't have to do any additional programming. We can just run it like this. So this is a great way just to try a resistor and an LED and see if you can make it blink using the Arduino. So that's doing it using plain wire. Let's do it using a breadboard, see how that goes. All right, doing this with a breadboard. In Tinkercad, they've got the USB power cord coming in from the left. In my situation on my bench, I've got it coming in from the right. 
I can't rotate this thing, so I'm just going to move it over here. Then I'm going to bring in a breadboard. It'll look somewhat similar to what I'm doing with my bench setup that you'll see uh, coming up. Let's get the resistor out again and get the LED out again, and then we'll wire it up using the breadboard here. The first thing I want to do is just set the resistor someplace on this board. Now, if I set it here, I've got a problem because all of these vertical connectors are one. So that's all a single wire. So if I connect my resistor the way I've got it, it'll just short the two leads together, which obviously won't work. So if you jump it across the bridge here, or this column of connectors is all one wire on this side of the bridge, and this column is all one on this side of the bridge, but the two sides of the bridge are separate. So that's the way that you want to connect items like this. Or you can rotate the resistor. You can bring it you can bring it back down here and if you rotate it, I'm going to tap R on my keyboard. If you rotate it, now the leads will not short out because this column is separate from this column. So you could do it either way. As long as I've got it this way, what the heck, I'll leave it this way. And then I'm going to put my LED in there and I'll put that right here. And again, this column is separate from this column, so there will not be any shorting going on. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, let's connect to pin 13 again. So I'll come down here and get a wire from pin 13 and connect that to the resistor. And then from the resistor to the LED. And from the negative side of the LED to ground. Now I could connect it to the ground plane right here and then run a wire from the ground on the Arduino to the ground plane of the breadboard and that would work. And that's very convenient if you got a bunch of components on here and you need to ground them all. You could ground a component here and a component here and run it to ground. Then running this wire is a good idea because it'll gang them all together. But seeing as I only have one thing that needs to be grounded. I'm going to delete that wire and I'm going to delete this wire. And then what I'm going to do is just run a wire from here straight to the ground on the Arduino. And then I'm going to color code my wires a little bit. So positive will make that red. So I'm going to click on it, tap uh, two on my keyboard and I'll make this green one uh, the common for black or for ground. So that would be black, and that's the one on the um, on the keyboard. And this one could be pretty much anything, but let's follow that through as positive, so I'll make that red as well with a 2 on my keyboard. Click anywhere away to get rid of the annoying dots. So that should work. Let's see what happens when we run the simulation. Here we go. We've got the external LED working, and we've got uh, the internal LED working. Let's exit the virtual world of Tinkercad and let's go into the real world and take a look at this on the bench. Okay, here we are on the test bench. I've got the breadboard and Arduino Nano and here's an Uno I thought I would just pull out just to show you the difference in size. So I don't use the Uno. That's the one that they have in the Tinkercad circuit, but I don't need that. And so I buy the cheaper nanos because they're all I need. So we'll put that away in here with all my Arduinos. Okay, let's put this little baby together and see how it works. So I'm just going to plug the nano in here. And then we had from the nano, we had going to pin 13 uh, from 13 to the resistor. So I've got a bunch of jumper wires here, commonly known as DuPont wires. Let's see here. We need, I'm, I typically use yellow for kind of a signal kind of thing. It's going to be pin 13 is kind of a signal coming out of the Arduino, the, positive, the uh, plus and minus or the high and low. Tinkercad uses black typically for ground, so I'll see if I have a black one there. Okay, so let's hook it up. So we're going to go from pin 13 to the resistor. Now, pin 13's up here. If I just try to plug this resistor into pin 13, 
other side of the resistor is going to run into interference from another pin on the Arduino. So we have to kind of extend this circuit out a little bit. So I'm going to use this jumper wire. I'm going to plug that into pin 13. And then I'm going to extend that pin out here. And then I can plug the resistor in there, which is the same thing as plugging it in pin 13. I can get a hold of it with my old arthritic fingers. And then I will just plug one side of the resistor in there and another side in here. And then the other end of the resistor went into the LED. And remember, the LED is polarized, so you have to connect it properly. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's got the short leg is on this side. That's the negative. And then the other one's the positive. So I am going to connect the negative to the ground plane. And then I'm going to connect the positive side to the column that is on the other side of the resistor. And then I have to connect the ground plane to ground on the Arduino. So it could be any place along this horizontal line any of these, they're all the same point, as are these vertical, all the same point in each vertical column. So all I have to do is connect this to ground, which is the second pin up in the, with the nano. One, two. And with any luck at all, we'll power this up and we'll have some blinking LEDs. And hopefully I will not let any magic smoke out. There we go, look at that. So we've got the internal LED blinking and we've got the external LED blinking. And I chose a 220 ohm resistor instead of the 1K we used in Tinkercad because 1K limits the current so much that would have been blinking really dim and you might not have been able to see it so well in this video. So I dropped it down to 220 ohms, which is allowing about 14 milliamps to the LED and it likes to run at about 20 milliamps. And then if I wanted to put this LED in some kind of a project or something, if I wanted to do the blinking LED in some sort of a project, what I would do then is just take these things out and I would just solder them together um, for the most part. Depending on the project, like I can use these DuPont cables, like I could use a male-to-male oh, -male DuPont cable. Well, I've got those right here. Now, not male to male, female to male. Let me get one of those. Let's take that yellow color. So one end is male and one end is female. And I keep all these things in separate little drawers and label them up front so I can find them easily. And by the way, I keep a whole bunch of them on hand because I always run out of the, you know, the common colors. Anyhow, I could connect this, just hook this up to pin 13 of the Arduino with the female connector. And then I could solder it. I could solder one end of the resistor to this, or I often will cut this pin off and then I will solder to the uh, stranded wire in here, but either way. So then I would have the resistor soldered to this, and then I would solder the positive side of the LED to the resistor, and then the negative side of the LED I would solder to ground. And then I'd be able to put this in any kind of a little project that I wanted to. I could solder the yellow lead to pin 13 of the Arduino if I knew it was going to be a permanent project. But using the female end of the jumper wire allows me to keep that thing easily removable. So I can set up the test quickly by just using the jumper wire. And if I want to disassemble it later, I just have to pull the wire off the lead, off the um, pin of the Arduino. So using these jumper wires makes it real handy to do quick connections and disconnections. So I use them a lot for temporary setups. And then once I have the situation permanent, then I would solder it. Because these DuPont jumpers aren't the most reliable connections in the world. They're fairly loose. 
So you don't want to use them in any kind of a serious circuit because you can't depend on the connection being made real well 100% of the time, but they're great for temporary setups. And I often wind up with something like this where I've done exactly what I just explained. And now on this end, it's important that you see a close up of that or not, but let me put it up there just in case. And then what I would do is I would take the other end and I'd connect it to the Arduino and then connect the Arduino to some sort of a power source, which could be batteries or it could be a wall work or something. So there is connecting the Arduino in real life on the test bench with and without the breadboard.